Hello again, this is Dr. Lindsay. I'd like to go over a couple of, one example here of uh, how to use this index that's created, this CPI index. So we'll take an example here of crossing the Atlantic on the Titanic and how much it costs then and what is that in today's dollars? So you hear people saying things like, well, during the depression, uh, bread was only a nickel. Isn't that cheap? Well, yeah, you would expect it to be cheap because there's been a lot of inflation since then. But what does that relate to in today's dollars? A nickel in the 1930s, what is that the same as today? Because everything's gone up in price. Well, in 1912, it cost $36.25 to take a ride on the Titanic third class. So Leonardo wins his ticket in a poker game and he gets a free trip along um, on the Titanic. At that time cost $36.25. Well, what is that equivalent to today? $36 in 1912. How do we compare that? Because prices are different than they were today. Well, we use the CPI numbers. So if I wanna know what $36.25 is worth today, or the latest numbers I have is December, 2020, I need to know the CPI numbers for today, and I need to know the CPI for 1912. Well, in 1912, the CPI was nine. Today, December, 2020, it's 261.56. That means something that cost $9 in 1912 is about the equivalent of something costing $261 now. So the way I can do this is say, how much is $36.25 worth? Well, it's just a ratio. 36 is to X, as nine is to 261.56 and solve for X. If $9 is worth $261 today, how much is $36 in 1912 worth today? So we just multiply 36.25 by 261.56 and divide by nine and I get $1,054. So that's about um, what he won in that poker game. Thousand bucks, which is enough to take that unfortunate trip on the Titanic. Now, if you went first class on the Titanic in 1912, the price was $4,350. That was the nominal price in 1912. How much is that in today's dollars? Now we'll do the same thing here. We'll take 4,350 over X is the same thing as nine is to 261.56. And I can solve for X. X is $126,420. So, that's the equivalent of what they were paying in today's dollars to go on first class on the Titanic, $126,000. You can see why so many rich people, very wealthy people died on that ship because they're the only ones that could afford prices like that. The other thing is kind of interesting to note is that if you go on a cruise today, a luxury cruise from Europe to the US one way, it doesn't cost anything near $126,000. Which means that the price of cruising, it's gone up, but not nearly as much as what the CPI basket has gone up. So remember things in the basket, they're all going up at different rates. We're looking at an average, but some things are going up more than the average in the basket and some things are going up less than the average. In this case, 
the price of cruises has been going up less than the average in the basket, or less than the average of inflation every year. So we want to make the distinguish, we want to distinguish between nominal prices and real prices. Nominal prices are just the market prices. So when we talk about the price of something, we're talking about the price of this calculator. That's a nominal price. The real price is after adjusting for inflation. So we want to know the real price because we want to see how it's changed over time. Over time, has the real price gone down or has the real price gone up? Has it been going up more than the average in the basket or less than the average of the basket? So for example, we want to take a look at the price of gasoline over time. Well, if we looked at the nominal price of gasoline, it's been going up. I mean, it's got some ups and downs along the way, but generally the nominal price has been going up because prices in general have gone up. But over time, what we want to look at is the real price of gasoline. What has that been doing? Is the price of gasoline in the year 2021 really higher than the price of gasoline in the 1960s? Well, nominal prices, I'm sure, are higher than the price in the 60s. But is the real price any higher than it was in the 60s? So what we'd want to do is use the CPI number so we can calculate what real prices are. So we could put every single year prices into one year's, like the base year prices and compare. And what we might find out that Maybe the real price of gasoline corrected for inflation is about the same as it was in the 1960s. So the real price is what we want to know more really than the nominal price. And if the price of something is just keeping up with the average in the basket, then the real price isn't changing. If it's going up more than the average in the basket, like healthcare, education, or textbooks, then the real price is going up. And if it's going up less than the average in the basket, then the real price would be falling over time. Okay, so what we've done in this video is we've gone through and we've looked at this CPI number and I've showed you how you can use it to convert prices from one year to a net, another year so that we can compare prices over time. And we do that by looking at this, the CPI numbers in each year. I want you to be aware that you can do this kind of thing. And we've also looked at nominal prices and real prices. Nominal prices are just market prices, which we think of as prices. We talk about prices. And real prices are prices after adjusting for inflation so that we can compare things or prices over time to see if the real price when we adjust for inflation, we adjust that nominal price for inflation, how much it's changing. And if the price is going up by more than the average of the basket, then the real price is going up. And if it's going up less than the average in the basket, the real price is falling.